Hey guys, what's up? Christine Seal here and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about how to port a number from call rail into high level. And I've gotten a lot of questions lately about this. And I just wanted to go over the process and tell you the drama that I went through to try to get this done. It took almost three months to do that. So let's get started. And also I wanted to ask you guys if you want to see more of these videos, make sure you like and subscribe and hit the little bell. That way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video and I'm here to create awesome content and value for you. Okay, so what we're gonna talk about is this. I've got the instructions up here on how to port a phone number away from CallRail. They really don't want you to do this. Call rail is between $30 to $40 a month, plus additional usage and additional fees and additional everything. Super expensive. And especially if, if you only have a handful of clients, uh, it can get costly pretty quickly. And you also can't even text it back. Uh, it's not two-way, so you can only see the calls your client's receiving and um, listen to those. Uh, you can't listen to any outgoing or receive any texts. So what we're going to do is we are going to port this number from call rail into high level. Now high level actually uses what's called Twilio and Twilio is a much more affordable platform. It's a dollar per number per month and you can actually text and email depending on the country that you're in. Most countries you can text and email two-way. And so all of the communications are actually gonna show up in your dashboard. It's pretty freaking sweet. So you might wanna do this if you were using CallRail before and your client really doesn't wanna change their phone number. Now I'm gonna tell you how to talk them out of it and actually be willing to change their phone number here in a minute because it really took me three months, guys. It was completely painful. It was more painful than it needed to be, but I'm gonna show you how to do it anyway, just in case. And this process is similar if your client has Verizon or AT&T or any non-call rail number, you're just gonna use a different form to do this. Now, what you wanna do is it says submit a ticket to our support team. Okay, well, you have to have an active account to do that. So I'm just gonna show you the form that they sent me in my email the next day. So they sent me this form. Actually, I'm, I'm lying. They did not send me this form initially. They told me that I needed to submit a signed invoice. I submitted a signed invoice. They said, no, we don't take signed invoices. I was like, are you freaking kidding me? So uh, they finally sent me this LOA. It's letter of authorization, and you have to fill this out with all the phone numbers. And when you uh, sign this, you have to make sure that everything matches what's on record with Twilio or else it's going to get rejected. Make sure your signatures match. Everything else is the same or it's going to get rejected. I made sure everything was the same, and guess what? Mine got rejected. It was so painful. I said that already, but oh my gosh, guys. Okay. So uh, I'm just going to take you through a little bit of the drama. This is only a handful of the emails that went back and forth. Um, but, you know, here's the, we can't accept a signed invoice, pr provide us with a signed LOA. That was Twilio. So Call Rail finally sent me the LOA. They really didn't want me to port my number away from them clearly. And then, um, here I had to, you have to notify Twilio as well. So step one is the LOA from CallRail. Step two is notifying Twilio. And then you have to have it dated within the last 15 days, current billing document. And then you're gonna verify your ownership. This says porting takes three to four weeks from the time your documents are received. And they could take longer than four weeks. Yeah, three months, guys three freaking months. It was not worth it. Uh, here we go. So bulk, average of four to six weeks, whatever. Okay, so there was that. So I filled out everything I thought I was supposed to fill out. And then they came back and said, hey, we rejected your information on file 
because it's not, your information is incorrect, it doesn't match, and it's gonna get rejected immediately. And this is July now, so I put this request in the beginning of May, like May 3rd, and this is July 8th, and it's still not done, not even close. Uh, and then here, you can see that I'm trying to pick the right email here because I pull them all up. That's the LOA. Here's the approval. This is the approval here, uh, July 31. Okay, so when they told me that my information was incorrect, I actually just replied and I was like, okay, well, you know, I just don't know why this isn't working because it's me, I'm the only owner and I own the business and it's my name and I signed it and, you know, everything should be the same. And then they were like, okay, well, we'll resubmit it. And it actually worked. So like I said, just make sure everything's the same. And then it's not, there, it's not three steps. <laughs> um, then what you want to do here is you're going to be able to track your, all of your um, number ports inside of Twilio. Okay, so I just logged into Twilio and you can actually, if you go to phone numbers, port and requests, you can actually see your porting requests here if you have any active ones. And if you click this button, it's actually going to help you start the uh, number porting process. So you have to click all of these check boxes here and agree, you know, that you're going to pay their usage, that you're going to keep the numbers in service with the current carrier, you're going to configure your number in Twilio, you're responsible for termination charges, and you may be unable to receive messages for up to three business days after the port completes. That right there is how you talk your clients out of this, guys. It is not a big deal to change phone numbers anymore. You can easily forward them, as I'm going to show you here in a minute. So, Honestly, if you tell them their phone number is going to be down for three days, they're not going to like that, and they're probably going to be okay with you just making a new number. <laughs> so, uh, and then you just put in your information in here, make sure it matches everything. There's the LOA from CallRail, so you put that in there. Uh, you add the billing document. I do not remember this being here when I did the port, so maybe they added this recently. They did tell me that, like, see this pin? CallRail does not use a pin. So that's something important to know as well when you're filling this out. And it's super easy to, to purchase a number inside of high level. So all you have to do is click Add Number, put your area code in here, Pick a number, save it, it adds it here, and then there's going to be a call forwarding number. Okay, so this is where you put the cell phone or desk phone of your client. You can turn on call recording, you can turn on a call recording message that says like, you know, this call is being recorded for quality assurance. You can do everything in here. There's literally no reason to, to port the number anymore. And honestly, if the three business days down doesn't get them, then I would also mention that, hey, you know, if you, if we port this number for you, then that means that I become the owner of your phone number. And if something happens for any reason, let's say I sell the business and move to Fiji, let's be, you know, end on a positive note that I own the phone number, right? So, uh, or if something happens that we have to break up and you got a negative note, again, I still own your phone number. So they're not going to want that either. And like I said, it's a dollar. So there's really no reason to do it. The reason I did it was because I thought it was going to be easier than it actually was. My client didn't want to change the phone number. But when it took me, it was taking me three months, she ended up saying, 
oh my gosh, just make the new number. I don't care anymore. And I, she literally told me that like the day before they finished the port. <laughs> so whatever, we ported the numbers anyway, but um, it was super, super painful. So also you're not gonna lose any functionality here. You're actually gaining functionality because you can two-way text and two-way call out of high level. So you can actually use this button to dial with a soft phone here. You can use your headset and make calls. You can record outgoing calls of your staff here. Um, you can go into conversations. You can see all of your texts and phone calls from your leads. So none of that stuff you could do before in CallRail. You can still listen to your calls in here. You can uh, actually, they're coming out with a new feature very, very shortly that's going to completely replace CallRail. They're coming out with number pools. They're coming out with uh, keyword tracking. So it's going to be very, very soon when they do this. And hopefully uh, this helps you in your journey. And just know that you do not have to port a number. And now you have good arguments against it, you know. So, and it's actually more cost effective as well to not port the number. So, uh, hopefully this helps you guys. And uh, please subscribe and like this video if you found it helpful. Make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss any updates from me. And stay tuned because I post every week to YouTube and I do a weekly Facebook Live on my profile. And it's going to be changing to my page pretty soon. But right now, it's a weekly uh, Friday at noon central. And you can head over there and send me a DM, ask me any questions that you have also. And I hope this helps you guys again. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you next time.